With construction starting on July 1st, 1959, Traus Vernet entered service in 1965 and generated electricity for 26 years before it reached the end of its service life in 1991. Traus Vernet was the first inland civil Magnox nuclear power station and drew its cooling water at the rate of 35 million gallons an hour from the man-made Traus Vernet Lake, originally built in the 1920s as part of a hydroelectric project at Mine Turog, which is still in use today. Traus Vernet site, located on a 15.4 hectare site on the northern bank of the Inland Lake in the heart of Snowdonia National Park, North Wales, is a twin reactor station, now defuelled and being decommissioned. When operational, the station produced enough electricity to meet the needs of a city the size of Cardiff for 24 hours. The decommissioning programme on site started in 1993, when defuelling commenced and is progressing well. Magnox North Limited is the management and operations contractor responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of the site under contract to the site owners, the Nuclear Decommissioning Authority. After the defuelling process was completed out at Traus Vernid, the next step was to deplant the turbine hall. Before they could carry out the work, all the asbestos installation had to be removed. This is the turbine hall prior to deplanting. There were four turbines in total. They deplanted, removed the top of the turbines and left the alternator behind, seen here at the back. Its weight in total was 140 tonnes and it was removed in two sections by a specialist contractor. This was the top floor after all four turbines and alternators were removed. This is the basement of the turbine hall which housed the condensers. Each turbine had two. Inside these were 21 foot long brass tubes, each weighing 500 tonnes. All of the brass tubes inside had to be removed before they could deplant the basement. In total, it took 12 months to deplant the inside of the turbine hall. The demolition of the exterior building started at the north end, working south. Here we can see one of the cranes being removed. To pull the cranes out, they lowered the hooks, cut the brakes off and then attached a line to the crane using an excavator. The crane was then pulled off the rails. Huge machines with pulverizers attached at the end were used to demolish most of the external work. Panels at the south side had to be removed carefully due to the proximity of the nearby buildings. Here the west side and east side of the turbine hall building was removed. To carry out this work a long reach machine was used with a shear attached to cut the roof trusses, leaving the centre section behind. The centre section was then separated into two. Each section measured 42 metres high. In order to remove the remaining turbine hall section, pre-weakening of the support legs was carried out. 